So I want to talk about Star Wars The Last Jedi and compare it to the prequels. Because there's been some talk in the Star Wars fandom about this movie being so damn polarizing. And the prequels are an interesting case because they were also polarizing, but for a different reason. So I want to, uh, first of all, say that there's going to be spoilers in this video for The Last Jedi. Not many, but there will be. And I want to warn everybody, you should definitely see this movie going into it with no spoilers because the impact of the moments are important. The movie's meant to be seen with no spoilers, whether you like it or not. So, the thing about comparing this movie to the prequels is that visually, even though this film is a lot more like the prequels than The Force Awakens was, which really The Force Awakens was grounded in original trilogy aesthetics, this movie had aesthetics that were Star Wars aesthetics. So it still feels more like a traditional original trilogy Star Wars film than the prequels did, mostly because of also the way it was shot. Um, there was a little bit more green screen in this movie than there was in Force Awakens, which had tons and tons of, uh, you know, tons of practical effects and real sets, but it still feels more like a Star Wars movie. But I think what a lot of fans have gripes with when it comes to this film, and we've talked a lot about this in the past few days, kind of the, the, the issues, good and bad, of what the movie does, is that even though The Last Jedi no matter what your opinion of it is, does, in a way, kind of undermine the original trilogy. The prequels were originally created to tell the backstory that would lead into the conflict that was in A New Hope. If you look at the original Star Wars trilogy, the prequels were pretty unnecessary. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that I hate the prequels, even though I have in the past, and, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say if you like them, you're wrong, but I'm saying you don't need the prequels. If you watch the original trilogy, you don't really need to know that Vader succumbed to the dark side because you already know he did. It just expounds on it. And nothing in the prequels really added any true lore to the original trilogy with the exception of seeing the Jedi in action, seeing their mistake, and seeing how Palpatine came into power. You know, it really just kind of was made to show the stuff that Obi-Wan was talking about in Episode 4. The Clone Wars, you know, what happened to Anakin, which he really didn't talk about in Episode 4 too much until Luke actually found out what happened later on. But the thing about the prequels is that they did expand the Star Wars universe tremendously. Regardless of all the problems in the prequels, which I'm, I can't even talk about this because it's like a five-hour video. If you don't understand why the prequels were very poorly received. You gotta watch Red Letter Media's Plinket reviews, and also Stuckman has some pretty good reviews on it too. And there's other people who have analyzed the prequels. There's literally tons of YouTubers who have analyzed them. They're just not very well-made films, but the one thing that has always been a treat, as far as George Lucas goes, is that he's very creative. He's a visionary. He obviously borrows ideas from other movies and other books and things like that, but... One thing about the prequels is it really expanded the world. We got introduced to new worlds, new civilizations, Naboo. We actually got to see the Senate that was discussed in the old trilogy. They actually showed it to us. We saw the Senate. We saw Coruscant. We saw, you know, the clone army. We saw how they were created. We saw all kinds of different things that were talked about in the original trilogy. And I think the issue with Last Jedi as to why it's being received more poorly than the prequels is because the prequels can be easily erased. In other words, if you don't want to watch the prequels, you don't have to. The story arc of, of Star Wars is about Luke Skywalker. Don't let anybody fool you, including George Lucas. George Lucas often says that the story of Star Wars is the redemption, the, the, the triumph and tragedy of Darth Vader. You know, how... Anakin became Darth Vader, but in reality, when he was first writing the original trilogy, the original trilogy, it was about the adventures of Luke Skywalker. That's what it was about. And the story of Luke Skywalker, from A New Hope to Return of the Jedi, that is the original Star Wars trilogy. Now, I think the reason why Last Jedi got shat on so much more so than the prequels is because with the prequels, yes, they were bad movies, and there was parts of them that were extremely boring, especially the first two, 
The CGI was kind of hard to look at because during the time they were made, it wasn't very good CGI. It looked like a video game. Again, I'm not going to go into the problems of the prequels. There's already tons of them, all right? But with Last Jedi, I think that the way that Luke Skywalker was written, which I already spoke of, and the way that the film would constantly sort of make fun of you for being a Star Wars fan, because that's pretty much what it did on the subconscious level, you know, I think that hurt people. I think that bothered people. I think that pissed them off. You know, because I think what happened with Force Awakens was whether you liked or disliked the, the, the film. And that movie, a lot of folks don't like that movie. I personally love Force Awakens. Um, the problem is that people got reinvested in Star Wars. You know, the, the prequels were such a letdown. And I don't know anybody who would actually say that Force Awakens is worse than the prequels. I mean, you could say that you like Revenge of the Sith more, but... If you really think that Force Awakens is a worse movie than Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, I mean, that that's your opinion, but I, I tremendously disagree. The thing is that Last Jedi sort of undermined not only its predecessor, you know, the, the original trilogy, but also The Force Awakens. And I've gone into explicit detail on this in my channel about all the different reasons as to why that movie took a, a huge shit on Force Awakens. You know, you have J.J. Abrams who set up this story for Ryan Johnson, said, okay, here's all the characters, do what you want with them, but here is kind of, you know, uh, the new mystery, so to speak. And then Ryan Johnson just pretty much took a dump on all those mysteries in The Last Jedi. You know, and that's what happened. I mean, that's, whether you like it or not, that is what happened. You know, he, he took a blowtorch to it. And The Last Jedi, specifically that, you know, that casino scene, really did have shades of the prequel. Like, it, it was a prequel scene, and people were probably turned off by it. In fact, even the positive reviews of that movie have constantly stated that that scene is the worst part of the movie. And it's there's other reasons why, but it does feel like a prequel kind of thing. Like, it felt like the, uh, something out of the prequels. And the thing is that I don't think people wanted that. I think when people got back on the bandwagon for Star Wars, they did want new Star Wars, but they didn't want the new Star Wars to kind of crap on the old Star Wars. They wanted it to just go in the direction of Rey, Finn, and Poe, which is why I think it's bullshit when people say, well, the fanboys couldn't get over the fact this is a new story. No, almost everyone I've talked to about this movie who doesn't like it really likes Poe, Fo, Finn, Poe, and Ray, and Kylo Ren. Like these characters, J.J. Abrams got them over. Maybe not Ray so much, because there's people who don't like her, but and that's fine. But definitely Finn and Kylo Ren were, were and again, he gets some hate too, but definitely they got more over. I think people cared. But this movie kind of didn't really reward you for being invested, and I've talked about that before. With the prequels, I don't think that Episode 2 undermined Episode 1, and I don't think Episode 3 undermined Episode 2, even though Episode 3 did fail on delivering some of the stuff that Episode 2 promised, like the whole Sifo-Dyas storyline, for example, which was teased in Episode 2, and we didn't really get an answer until... I mean, there was some EU stuff, but it wasn't until Clone War that we really got an answer to that. So, you know, that was a problem, but I think the thing about the prequels is that even though... They are a little weird. They still sort of feel like Star Wars. And I think it's because of the way that they are edited, the way that they are presented. Is it what George Lucas did? Is it a formulaic way of making movies? Yes. It's without question the George Lucas formula where you have characters, you split them off, you bring them back together at the end. And Ryan Johnson kind of tried to do that with this movie, but because of the way it was edited, again, just my opinion... I feel like he tried to get too cute with it, which I've talked about before, and he also, I think, spent, and this is what others have said, too much time in one location without furthering the plot along at the correct pace that it needed to be, you know, and I think that the film is sort of like a four-act movie, but it really isn't. It's a three-act movie, but the second act is so long, you know, the second act is pretty much from when they go to Canto Bay. It's like the first two acts are really long then the third act is really short. That's the way it feels. I haven't checked the runtime of it, see how long they actually are, but you know, it, it does feel kind of drawn out. And I think that the movie, the way that it keeps cutting back and forth, it just does it too much and it doesn't give the movie time to breathe. It really didn't do that. And even the prequels had times where it kind of scaled back and gave us time to breathe, except for maybe Revenge of the Sith, because that movie was very rushed. And when I say rushed, I mean the plot, not the production. The movie just feels very fast-paced. But even if you don't like the prequels, the prequels did add a sense of complexity and history to the universe 
that this movie just doesn't add. I mean, we got Crate and we got Canto Bite, which Canto Bite wound up being just a big freaking political message to the audience, which sucked. And then we got Crate, which is one rebel base that was never mentioned before except for in the books. And the way it was introduced in the movie was so bad because had they said at the beginning of the movie, had Leia said, okay, our goal is we have to get to Crate, that would be a different story. That's not what the plot was. The plot of the movie was we have to get to, we have to escape the First Order and then they're about to escape and oh look, there's Crate. That was a rebel planet. What a coincidence. That was bad writing. I mean, that was legit like lazy writing. They could have come up with a million different reasons to get to Crate and it was just happenstance. You know, it was just there. And then Laura Dern, you know, decides to sacrifice herself by doing that scene with the with the light speed, which I liked. I mean, I, I enjoyed that scene. And it's a scene that I think works within the context of Star Wars. But I think the issue with Star Wars The Last Jedi versus the prequels is that the prequels were undoubtedly Star Wars movies. I mean, George Lucas made them. They felt like Star Wars despite all their problems, whereas The Last Jedi tried so hard to not be a Star Wars movie and just to be like a Marvel branded, Disney branded, you know, slosh fest disguised as a movie that has Star Wars aesthetics in it. That's pretty much the way I saw it. And I'm not the only one. A lot of people have picked up on this. Whether or not they realize that there is a meta narrative in this movie, I think people have picked up on the bullshit. I think people have understood. I think people have picked up on what Disney's trying to do here now. I think they have. And I feel like with the last movie, Force Awakens, maybe they blinded me with the nostalgia and with the good writing. Because that movie does have good writing. And... I didn't see it then, but I really see it with this movie. You know, what they're trying to do and the message they're trying to send. And I think Star Wars fans who invested their time and in some cases their lives in this thing are not going to take it this time. They're just not going to swallow it because they made it so obvious in this movie. If they had stopped doing that so obviously in this film, it would have worked out a lot better, I think. People were invested. So anyways, that's my ramble about Last Jedi. And I'm sure I'll have more coming, but... What do you think? Do you agree? Let me know down below. Talk to you all then.